Do you believe God is here? Do you believe it? There's something I'm in high expectation for. This baptism of the Holy Ghost program, we've been doing it in this church since this ministry started. But this is the first time the pro program, baptism of the Holy Ghost program is preceded by a 21 day fast. This is the first time. The very first time. I am in great expectation. And I'm so happy that the people believe in the fast. Hallelujah. Chiwen, do you had a revelation concerning it? I saw her somewhere. Mr. Chiwen, you had a revelation concerning this camp. Come. Yes. The angel of the Lord told you something concerning this 21 days fasting. Yes, sir. Okay, you never recover. Sorry. Eh? Today I wrote it that I gave you okay. to you. <laughs> Go sit down. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Be in expectation there will be a divine visitation. Now watch it. Watch it, church. This revelation that these prophets are given, they should form prayer points for you within these 21 days of this fasting. Most houses, most of them, we all of us, they rent to so. Most they are occultic houses. That's the truth. Let's use this period and liberate ourselves from occultic landlords. Anything planted in the compound I am living. Lord, expose it and destroy it. It's a powerful prayer point. Everybody... Almost every house. Pray, Lord. Reveal if there is anything in this compound that is working against me. Reveal it. Amen. When I moved into a house in 1998 that I rented, few months after I moved in there, in a revelation, I was sitting down there. Somebody just knocked the door. I went out to see him. I said, yes, how are you? A man stood and looked at me. He said, have you found out why the last person that lived in this house packed out before you packed in? I said, no. Then he disappeared. Ah. I come to myself and said, ah, which can't tell me this? I told my wife, say, see what I see now. Will I say back today here? Yeah. Amen. Small time the children go say when they, they sit down upstairs, they go see place and they climb stairs, they go up, they come down. Ah, for this house, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Another young girl living with me that was climbing up. He says, small time. Physically, they push him. He told him, what happened? He says, John had... I say, me go share this house with demons. Ah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I am not among those that pack out of a house because of uh, the Lord. Ah, lie, lie. Praise the Lord. It's the landlord go pack off of me. I rented another office. A small time. My junior sister came and told me, say, hey, now here you can't rent. I said, what happened? He said, she wanted to come and rent that place before. 
Everybody there told her that nobody enters this place and prospers. He said, nobody they renew the rent here. Then I looked at her. She was a Muslim. I said, the God I serve <laughs> is different from the God you serve. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I say, don't worry. He said, I'm telling you now, brother. I'm telling you now. Amen. Anyway, just as my rent was about due for renewal, the woman died. That is the truth. Praise the Lord. The woman died. In my house, I started prayers. In the night, it was a one man battle. There's no need to involve anybody to do with me. I don't even want to be disturbed. When they are all asleep, and that I go wake up. I will carry my anointing oil with a basin of water. Pour on there. I say, the Bible says, wherever I step my feet, I will possess. Therefore, I possess. I will not share this house with demons. If witches are meeting in this house, I have come to take over this house. I got carry water. The whole compound. Everywhere. They carry everywhere. Every window. Every door. Everywhere. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shortly after, that nonsense stopped. I'm telling you, we are serving a God that fights battle. Fight battle. Let that be among your prayer points. By next Friday, when we come, I will ask for some testimonies of what happened in the company you are living. Sometimes it is not the landlord. Sometimes it is a neighbor. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Somebody here, a neighbor will run mad because of you. Do you believe it? Hallelujah. Now finally, there's a one prayer point I want you to add this prayer period. Two Sundays ago, I took a message that I just uh, took the first part of it and promised to complete it, but I couldn't complete it because we had to talk last Sunday about fasting. But it is needful. Who remember the sermon topic? The will of God. We looked at the will of God. And I told you, we picked our scripture from Matthew chapter 7. Can we open it? Just give me 10, 15 minutes to say something. Then we shall pray. We still have about four or five more prophets that want to prophesy. But I also have some prayer points I want us to have some to release, some bullets to release. I'm a soldier of Christ, a general in the army of the Lord. Matthew chapter 7 is where I picked that text from. Hallelujah. And that scripture is very, very important. So many of us gloss over it. But the importance, not too many of us bother to ponder on that scripture. Verse 21. Verse 21. And I don't want to forget, today is the last Friday. Every one of us shall be anointed as our custom is here. As our custom demands in bride assembly. It is our cover. Because William Abraham told us, say anywhere you apply the anointing oil, he said the Holy Ghost come there. Amen. It is Holy Ghost juju. You know we they do juju. 
Christians get their juju. And it is the highest juju because our master is the head of principalities and powers. Hallelujah. Eh? Eric, you have been going to your village all these years. But this year you went more confident than ever before. More than confident today. More than confident. I stand like a lion in the village. You stood like a lion. Lion. Bold one. Bold lion. Yes. Because, because, because something gave you that confidence. What gave you the confidence? Class in me, the, ho the hope of glory. Yes, but you have been a Christian before now. Yes, now religiously. Okay. A religion. When I came here, my eyes were opened. <laughs> Your eyes were open after you came here. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. I know. There's something that gives you confidence. One of the things that give you confidence is what we want to look at now. Let me read that scripture first. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. It says, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will, somebody shout the will. Amen. Say it again. Amen. Shout it very loud. Amen. But he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven. Then he said in verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. Now the emphasis here, church, is that at the end, he said, then, which then? Then they are is when all these things, the end of all things come. For every one of us shall stand before Christ for judgment. Either in the judgment seat of Christ or in the white throne judgment. Judgment seat of Christ is 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 or the white throne judgment in Revelation chapter 20. Now, but these people say, Listen, church. I believe with the whole of my heart that this group of people that the Bible is talking about will not even have the chance of standing before Christ. What he's saying there is these are the group of people because the, 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 the first thing you must know is that the next thing we are expecting is the rapture. That is, and those that will go in the rapture Certainly, are those that God has perfected here. Then, there are people now that will expect to be in the rapture, but they will find out that they will not be in the rapture. And they will sit down and be grumbling. How can, how can, how can, how can? Why are they boldly saying before the Lord, how can? They were saying boldly because they were sure. He said, in your name, Jesus, we cast out devils. In your name, we did mighty miracle signs and wonders. In your name, we were performing miracles. In your name and church, they were not using juju. They were using genuine anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yet, Christ didn't know them. That is what I want you to note. Because so many people get carried away with the anointing. So many people get carried away. Especially those of us that God is using. We get carried away by that anointing and believe that since if we say in Jesus name, something happens. It means God is pleased with us. But that is something I want us to look at. He said, 
Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom. And the kingdom there is talking here, referring to the 1,000 years reign of Christ that is coming after the rapture. Where Christ shall be king of kings while we are kings. He said, but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven. It's not the anointing that matters. But are you exercising that anointing in the will of God? You see, now I'm using the anointing as an example. The emphasis there is doing the will of God. The question is then, why they are, they, they are not in the will of God, then why is God anointing them? Because he's the one that anointed them. Church, he's the one that anointed them oh, by himself. He anointed them. But he has anointed them, yet he's saying, you are not in my will. Why? There are two wills of God. There is the perfect will and there is the permissive will. There is the perfect will of God and there is the permissive will of God. God does not work by permissive will. God works only in his perfect will. I'm saying this as a prayer point as we go on this journey, 21 days. We're in a journey of 21 days and we must enter the promised land. Israel had their own for 40 days. We are having our own for 21 days. They enter Jericho. We too, we must enter our Jericho. But I want to tell you, church, out of all those that started the journey, only two testified in that generation that started the journey. Only two. Only two. Some of you started on Monday. The generation that started on Monday. How many will fall by the wayside? How many will fall by the wayside? He who thinks he stand, take heed lest he fall. Amen. There are some that are just hearing us now and they would like to join and continue. Join and continue. The grace is there. Continue. It is ending on the 12th of June. It is ending on the 12th of June. You're just joining us now. You're just hearing it now. Join. We have our prayer centers everywhere. Eight of them, the pamphlets that will be given to you shortly. Those who have not received theirs. Praise the Lord. The catch there, I want you to note, children of God, is that there is God's perfect will and there is his permissive will. We looked at God's perfect will and, 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 and I want you to note that every human being, you also have your own will. You have your own will. And sometimes, what, when we are coming to God, we come and impose our will on God. When you come before God, every true Christian, your prayer is, let my own will be buried in your own will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Christ had his own will. The father had his own will. When he saw the torture that was coming his way at the garden of Gethsemane, he went crying to the father that if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But he quickly added the obedient son that he is. Yet not my will, but thy own will be done. I can't go through this. 
I can decide I will not go and die. That is my will. But I am here to do the will of him that sent me. That's why he kept telling everybody. He's not here to do his own will. Christ said, I am here to do the will of him that sent me. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. He said, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are they called according to his purpose. Every one of us, we are not called according to our own purpose. We are called according to God's own purpose. God called us to fulfill his own purpose, not your own purpose. You need to catch it. Stop imposing your own will on God's own will. Stop doing that. How you we impose our will on God's own will sometimes without even knowing it. How the will of man is strong. When he's set to do anything, nothing can stop him. That's why every one of us must learn if you must prosper in your Christian journey, learn to subject your own will to the Father's will. His will is the perfect will. And there is something knowing that the perfect will does. It gives you confidence and boldness. You see? It gives you confidence and boldness. You say, you say, now that you came, your eyes were open. Suddenly you knew that all these years that you were in those churches that you were in, eh, you were only being religious. But you came here, you had something. You positionally got yourself placed. Praise God. Eh? Ask these two people behind you, are they in the perfect will of God? Are you in the, are you in the perfect will of God? <laughs> you are not. Ask your neighbor. If you see and they shake head anyhow, say, this is not the will of God for you. Shake them. It's not your will of God that you should come to church and sleep. Knowing you are in the perfect will of God gives you boldness. Boldness. Because when it comes to call, there are some men that set up ministry from their own personal ambition. Amen. And when you are setting up a ministry or a pastor by an ambition, then you will be using all manner of sense to keep the ministry. You will be using idea, human idea and theological principles to keep it together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But when you know that it is God that has called you to do what you are doing, you are bold. That is why Pastor Moses is bold. Hallelujah. I am sure I am in God's perfect will. I have everything to support it. I have everything to support it. I am certain. And that's why when some of you bring some revelation to me, I will just laugh. Pastor, I see they kill you. I say if they kill me, it means God has finished with me. And the truth is, if God has finished with me, what am I waiting here for? If you kill me, am I going to hell or am I going to heaven? So, is that a bad revelation? Pastor, when I see you die, it's not a bad dream. Are you hearing me? Eh? If you see me dead, it's not a bad dream. Praise the Lord. Let, let, let me tell you something. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you want to deal with me, will you kill me? If you kill me, you go pain me. Eh? If you kill me, 
go pay me. Eh? It is the enemy of my wife. If you want to deal with my wife, then you can kill me. I, I hope you understand. <laughs> Therefore, I'm not going to pray against death. Now my wife go pray that prayer. <laughs> no, that's the truth. She's here now. She's hearing me. Eh? Now you're supposed to pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So certainly, what is giving me the boldness is because I know I am walking in God's own perfect will. And this is how the will of man plays so much until this is how God puts it in Ezekiel chapter 14. He told Ezekiel, if you read it even from verse 1, he said, when the people come to inquire from you with the idols in their hearts, what is that idol in their heart? That is, they have made up their mind, this is what I want to do. But the Bible says, before I do anything, we should go and inquire. Well, so that God no go say, I no inquire. But me, me, this Guru Maharaj, man, I go marry. Anything, 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 I go marry. Anything. It's there in your heart. But to fulfill all righteousness, you are going. He said, He, the Lord, will answer that person by Himself. He said, He will answer the person according to the idol in His heart. So before you come, before a vindicated prophet like Ezekiel, when you stand up, I want to inquire whether, before you even talk, you say, wait. Before you tell me why, I know why you are here. Is it not because of Labaja, the Guru Maharaj? He said, yes. The Lord said, it's your husband. Hey, hey. The Lord said, did the Lord say so? Yes. Did God say so? Yes. And there will be a confirmation when you lie down that night. You will see your wedding taking place. Did God say it? Yes. Did God permit you to marry that Guru Maharaj? Yes. But that is his permissive will. Permitting you to grant your heart desire. Because you know the correct thing, but your heart is set on another thing. And yet, you are coming before him. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, God's perfect will says, be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers. You know it, yet you are yoking yourself with Guru Maharaj. Didn't you know? Yes, you know. I, the Lord, will answer that person by myself. I will answer him according to the idol in his heart. Praise God. We have the story of Bela. I'll just say that of Bela and we continue, we stop. Because we never pray. And we want to prophesy. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That story is in Numbers chapter 22. You take time and read it on your own. We don't have time to do any long reading today. Israel was passing by. The king of Moabites. King Balak. King Balak had what was happening on the wilderness journey. Fear caught him. He came and wanted to stop them from passing through his land like that. Out of fear. What will he do? He knew of one prophet called Balaam. Church, listen for those hearing me for the first time. King Balaam and King Balak 
sent for prophet Balaam. I know that there is power in your mouth. I know that anything you cause is caused. Sent a lot of gifts, silver, gold, plenty money. Something that will make that prophet serious. But that prophet has the ability to inquire. When they came, he told them to sleep this night. Let me do vigil and find out what God will say. He knelt down and prayed. Made his altar as usual. And offered the sacrifice to contact the God of Israel. The Bible says, God came down to speak to Balaam. You can't curse those people. Because whom I have blessed, you can't curse them. No man can curse whom I have blessed. I have blessed them. You can't curse them. That is God's perfect will. What is God's perfect will? Whom he has blessed, you, Balaam, you can't cause. In any, in any, that is, he said, Balaam, don't do it. Loud and clear. He woke up with his eye on that gift. Oh, look, listen. I remember before he went, he told them, he said, look, 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 look. Before I say anything, it is what God tell me now, I go tell him. He was sincere about it. But he thought since he's a king, he said some people are coming. He didn't know which people were coming. He didn't know that this time they are untouchable. Can you tell your neighbor, I am untouchable, touchable? No, shake your neighbor. Wait, wait. Tell her who you are. Eh, sister, shake that lady. Tell her. Eh. Tell him, I am untouchable. No, if you are sure you are untouchable, Tell your neighbor now, look at me, I am untouchable. Uh -huh. <laughs> Certainly, I'm untouchable. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Listen, church. Hallelujah. He came in the morning and told them, this is what God is saying. The messengers went back to King Bela. And told King Belak, King Belak now increased the offer. They came back. Belak now look, he said, Child, now money be this, now opportunity be this. Now we are person they walk in the chop. Oh. And this anointing, where God give me? Uh, I'm not going to wait. Let me go and inquire again. He spent that night again. Church, listen. After hearing God's perfect will, he went back there again the night and was troubling God. Should I? Should I? Should I? What is he wanting God to answer him? He was demanding God to give him permission to go after knowing the perfect will of God. God told him, you can go. Did God tell him to go? Answer me now. Eh? Answer me now. What do you call right now? What in the right? Did God tell Balaam to go and curse Israel? Did he? No, sisters, are we together? Did God tell him this second time that he should go? But the first time God told him why he cannot go. He came a second time now. God told him, go. Tap, tap, tap. Balaam stood up. Prepare his car. Prepare his uh, horse, uh, donkey. Sat on it. Let's go. If you see Balaam running and going, you ask Balaam, where did they go? What will he say? God say, I should go and curse those people coming. Did he not say so? God say so. God will say so. God will say I should go and curse those people. Praise the Lord. But that was God's
permissive will. As he was going, his mind is thinking of the gifts, the gifts that was coming behind him. Unknown to him, an angel of death was waiting in front. Why will God tell him, go and curse those people and then again at the end, send his angel with a sword to finish him on the way as he was going there. You see? Didn't they go where we read now? Didn't they go to the mountain and ask for anointing? They were doing dry fasting. God released the anointing upon them, yet at the end they say, I didn't know you. But you are the one that gave them the anointing. Yes, you are saying you didn't know them. And at the end, he said, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. All because you ignored God's perfect will. Even in marriage, are uh, some true daughters of God not suffering now. With the kind of yoke, they yoke themselves in marriage. Son or daughter of God, genuine children of God, you ignore all the perfect will of God for you for marriage and you went for the permissive will, the one your heart desire wanted. That is the one you went. And some of them are not suffering it till now. That's the truth. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And that angel will have smitten him there straight. Will have cut off his neck there. It was that same animal as that saved him. That animal he was riding on saw the angel and dodged the angel. We know the story. I'm not going to all that detail, but the emphasis there is God telling him to go. Yet, God sent the angel again to finish him on the way. Why? God's permissive will. A lot of us here, we ask questions. When you come to bride assembly and we say, the Bible does not permit woman pastor, for instance. The next thing, the first thing that comes to your mind is, but, but, but it, that is where I receive Christ. It was under her ministry that I received the Holy Ghost. How can you say that woman pastor is not in the will of God? That woman pastor is in the will of God, but is not in the perfect will of God. That woman pastor is in the permissive will of God. And at the end, she will find out that God will never bypass his word for anybody. For God is no respecter of persons. Hallelujah. That's the truth. Woman pastor here, go and resign. Oh. But, 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 but I heard the voice that told me, Pastor Moses, I am sure how God talks to me. He's the one that said I should go and start that ministry. That he will use me mightily. When did he call you? When did he give you that word? Was you know when you were busy fasting and telling me, God, use me. God, use me. I want to turn Lagos upside down. Was you know when you were doing dry fasting, he came and talked to you? What were you doing dry fasting for? And troubling God for God to use you and turn Lagos upside down. When it is written, I permit not a woman to teach, nor you sub authority over the man. That is God's perfect will. You read it every day. Why are you going to the mountain to ask God for a ministry? He will give you. He will give you. Sister, he will give you. He will give you. He will give you. Oh, sister, he will give you. But at the end, he will say, I never knew you. Because you were not doing the will of the Father. The will of the Father is in the Bible. His will is here. Ah, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the truth now. Perfect will. Perfect. It covers every aspect of your life. Perfect will. Madi, you are busy looking at the testimonies that are going on in the ministry. And I told you, 
the story of Moses. That Moses, amen, God, the children of Israel, um, you see, anytime, that is the one that fears me the most, that confirms that God is no respecter of persons. No special person before God. I'm telling you. No special person before God. That is the truth. Moses, that, that his calling was so sure until Data Korah and Abraham stood to mess him up. God opened the ground and swallowed over 200 and something people just for challenging Moses. Miriam and Aaron we are grumbling because Moses married an Egyptian woman. Because they are close to Moses. What did God do to Miriam? Leprous immediately for challenging a servant of God that God called. He said, look at you. Among all of you, if there's a prophet among you, I appear to that person in dream or vision. But, but, but Moses is not like that. I speak to him mouth to ear. The Bible says Moses was the meekest man on earth. With all that testimony, they were going in the wilderness. Suddenly, the people were thirsty. He went to God. The people are thirsty now. How? What, what do I do? God, they said, look, a rock appeared. He said, that stick you hold in your hand, go and strike the rock and water will come out. He went there and struck the rock. Did water come out? Yes. And there was a revival. The journey continued. The same situation arose again. Moses, this time they troubled Moses so much. Moses went before the Lord again. That rock appeared again. God told him. This time he said, go and speak to the rock. What did he say you should do to the rock? If you are with me, say it now. He said, speak. Yes. Moses went to the rock. Out of anger. Instead of speaking, what did he do? He struck the rock again. What did God tell him to do? Speak. What did Moses do? Strike. Did God tell him to strike? No. What did he do? He struck. But did water come out? Eh? He did the wrong thing. But water still came out. Catch it. He did the wrong thing. But the water that the people were crying for, the water still came out. And the people were saying, Hey! Hey! See this Moses. Moses is a great man of God. See this Moses. Moses is a great man of God. There was a revival in the camp of Israel. But while they were receiving revival, a death sentence was on the head of Moses. Why? Moses, will you strike me a second time? One will have said, He's so special, therefore, let me let's let, warn him. Oh. Moses, don't do this again. Oh. Don't do this. Oh. But God is no respecter of persons. Because of it, he told you you will not enter the promised land. I am telling you, hallelujah. There is revival going on under woman Jew, woman pastor, woman reverend doctor. A woman deputy international coordinator, woman uh, evangelist, woman uh, archbishop, woman pastoress, woman this, woman that. Thank God for the revival. But while the revival is going on, a death sentence is hanging over that woman pastor. From above, I never knew you. Get thee from me, ye that walk iniquity. And iniquity is knowing the right thing to do and refusing to do it. You see? Therefore, you must be in God's perfect will. 
Not in your own will. Not in your own will. Concerning the ministry, it must be God's perfect will. If God has not called you to be a pastor, don't go and set up a church because you have a gift. You have a healing gift. Everybody is coming. There is no ministry in the Bible as a healing ministry. All this funny thing say, no, like that sister say, where she was going, say, no be church or na ministry. It's a business limited. I know those type of places. They will go and rent a shop somewhere and sit down and rent one place every Wednesday. Mokuna, they come for my for counseling. Uh, what did happen? Uh, my, my gift all that nonsense Pentecostals do. Our eyes of understanding he has opened. See, our eyes have been opened. That's why I'm saying it boldly. Boldly. And I will call every opportunity I have to preach, I will say it hard. Because it is being recorded. Even if I am no more like William Abraham, William Abraham sounded it hard. He died in 1965. I had a message in 1989. He preached it hard. He saved the people in those days. And it is still saving the people now because we are in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Don't know what lays ahead. So why should I be preaching as if I own tomorrow? Every sermon I preach, I preach it hard because either I may not have opportunity to preach again or you may not have opportunity to listen to it again. That's why I'm saying it now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Woman pastor is God's permissive will. It's God's permissive will. All these people going to rent a shop, sit down and be seeing vision for people. Or gather people, gather money, and then they, they, they group. They'll be going up and down and doing family deliver from village to village. God has nothing to do with that thing. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's God's perfect way for deliverance. They're going to somewhere. They have not given their life to Christ. What are you going to meet people who don't know Christ? And you're invoking the power of Christ to deliver them. Deliver them from who? They go there and create trouble for that family and say they have gone for deliverance. There's God's perfect will. There's God's permissive will. Ask for his perfect will in everything you do. The kind of job you do. The kind of business you do. There is God's perfect will. Which business you should do that God has ordained for you to do. There is the kind of wife you should marry. The husband you should marry. God's perfect husband for you. God's perfect wife for you. Even the place of worship. It's not every church that is your own church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If there is any sister here, you are a Christian, and you believe that there is nothing wrong with wearing trousers as a Christian woman, because you heard the voice of the Lord telling you it doesn't matter. It is what is in your heart. I know where your church is. Bride assembly is not your church. Certainly because another sister is sitting with you and the Holy Ghost told her, don't wear trousers. And the pastor here is telling everybody here, don't wear trousers. In your heart, you are saying it doesn't matter. That is evidence Bride assembly is not your church. I can tell you the address where your church is. It's at Oregu. It's at Oregu. I'm telling you, it's not every church. Church, for every sheep, there is God's ordained shepherd for you. If you are not under the right shepherd, spiritually and physically, your life will remain stagnated. Amen. 
And what is the evidence that he is your shepherd? Whatever he tells you to do, you will do it. If you don't do it, how do you expect to give testimony? Therefore, Bride Assembly Church, it's not for everybody sitting down here. Go and pray. God will show you where your church is. Go there, you will prosper. Some people prosper in select. Praise God. Some people will prosper under Reverend Father. Under Reverend Father. Any demon tormenting you, evil. Reverend Father, come with holy water. The demon go run. Because that is where you belong. Oh, you have not understood. Uh, 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 Pastor Chris, now, now you are the suspect, Pastor. You don't go Babalao before. No. As an unbeliever, you never go Babalao. As an unbeliever. Ah. Oh, your papa be Babalao. Who, you don't go before. Do you know that as an unbeliever, before you know Christ, do you know that you will go there with some people, you go work for them, you don't go work for you? Yes, sir. You know they work for me. Eh? You know they work for me. Even as an unbeliever, eh? yes, you don't go work for you. you because for there are some people that they are always na Babalao way. Eh? Because they are ordained to go to hell. And that is the person that will lead them to hell. Eh? But your own name is written in the book of life. From the foundation of the world. That's right, that's right. Therefore, if you go to Babalao, nothing will work for you. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is the truth. There is a place for somebody. Oh, it too, Papa, I'm native doctor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No, that is the truth. Get God's perfect will. Lord, concerning this thing I am doing, what is God's perfect will? See, the fact that you see vision, the fact that you prophesy, hallelujah, hallelujah, does not now places you in the office of a prophet and you sit down like that. Church, church, listen. A true confirmed evangelist, listen. A true confirmed evangelist, God, normally is normal, will anoint you with such an anointing that is even higher than the anointing that is on a pastor. A true uh, uh, evangelist, we have a powerful healing gift, word of knowledge gift, vision, prophecy. Why? So that when he goes before the unbelievers, he will say, I am going to show you the difference between this and that. Between the gods that you serve and the God that I have brought before you. Hallelujah. And there will be manifestation. So that they will believe the gospel. But in bride assembly, once they start to see vision, they don't follow for rally again. They don't go out for market evangelism again. They are asking for a conditional office. Oh yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are walking outside the will of God when you do that. Until in this church, people scheme to enter Eagle's camp. They scheme, scheme, scheme to join the group for prophets. Why? Me to have started seeing vision so that we can be sitting and doing one-on-one counseling. Is that God's perfect will for your ministry? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pastor in a vision. I'm always seeing myself. Praying for people. Large people. I'm seeing myself with microphone. Microphone. Hallelujah. Then wait for the appointed time. Amen. Sister Chiu, when the angel told you the manifestation is the interpretation. Don't because you see a vision 
You see a dream. Then you go and open ministry. Pastoral ministry. You will suffer. Eh? You will suffer. Hungry will wire you. You will lower the gospel. You will change. You say, no, sisters, you can wear anything you like. Be like, say, well, do they do this into too much? Because the real people that support ministry, they are the unbelievers in the church. They are the ones that support ministries. Because children of God are very, very stingy. Go to Brown Assembly, you will see them there. We raise offering for a minister of God in this church that needed accommodation. We say at least 1,000 naira. People came. Up to now, those people were right. Half of them have not brought the one 1,000. Half never bring out. Half never bring out. But in this same church, hallelujah, hallelujah, some people are marching forward. Eh? Some people are marching forward. If you lock your own pocket, God has his own. You lock them for yourself now. Eh? Is this church not moving forward? We are not comparing ourselves with anybody. Eh? If we are not bring money, then we stay under this shade. Now so we can stay. Jesus Christ, we come, we go, go. That's so we go go. I will never collect money from a cocaine pusher to build the church. Oh, you think it's empty boast? They have brought 50 million naira cash. So, what do you do? So, I will tell you the truth. Now, cocaine pastor, you know, I'm in the house of God. I come I say, ah, Who directed you here? Carry your money and go. Praise the Lord. How much? Oh, 60 million. Okay, it was 60 million. <laughs> Another one brought uh, 40 million. Was waiting to bring it in check for tight. Uh -huh. I said, anybody will bring tight from cocaine. You drop it here. Say that as you come out here, they will arrest you. You'll be in jail till Jesus come. It's true now. <laughs> 